Good morning, everyone. I welcome you all to this lecture series, which has been started by UN Meta Institute of Cardiology and Research Center. We have decided to hold uh, lectures every Saturday morning for the benefit of students, aspirants who are interested to take up cardiac surgery and want to know more about it, and also residents who already are in a residency program. Our faculty members who are highly experienced will be taking didactic lectures of 30 minutes on every Saturday. And on this beautiful Saturday morning, we have a wonderful speaker, none other than our own HOD, Professor and HOD, Dr. Chirag Doshi, sir. Sir will be talking about minimally invasive CABG. Sir has completed his MCH from Nair Hospital, Mumbai, after which he had the privilege of working with Dr. Bhattacharya himself. And after a short stint at Leipzig, Germany, one of the meccas of minimally invasive cardiac surgery and Apollo Chennai, for the last decade or so, he's been holding the fort at UN Meta Institute of Cardiology and Research Center. He's a flag bearer for minimally invasive procedures. His colleagues, students, other observers, have spread out all over India and to the neighboring nations and are practicing minimally invasive cardiac surgery. So it's a privilege to have someone who has one of the largest series of minimally invasive CABGs, valvular procedures and congenital cardiac procedures with us today. So I welcome Dr. Chirag Doshi and let us hear this wonderful talk. A very good morning to all of you. First of all, I would like to congratulate everyone involved in making this vision of the faculty lecture series a reality. And today I would like to speak about minimally invasive coronary artery bypass grafting, that is mixed CABG. UN Meta Heart Institute of Cardiology and Research Center has become a center of excellence in cardiac sciences and one of the largest in the world. And with all your blessings and support, we have been continuously achieving a new milestones. Abreast with modern technology, our mixed program is robust in nature. So how do we define mix? So any procedure not performed with full sternotomy with or without using CPB is called mix. So as of now, there are five levels of mix. So in level one, the size of the incision is almost half than the conventional one. That is around three to four HS. Here, what you can do is you can use a similar equipment and just you need to modify your techniques. But level Two onward procedure would require a very sophisticated equipment as well as endoscope. But level two onward procedures, you can in fact further reduce your incision by almost half the level one. That is around a couple of inches. But level three, again, it is a total endoscopic procedures where the incisions are multiple in nature, tiny, but they are really, really small. Level four is robotic uh, surgery. Here, most of the surgeries will be done by robotic arm and level four is percutaneous procedures. Level two onward procedures has not become popularized in country like India because of obviously economical constraint. So it is evident from this slide, though coronary forms the major chunk, very few percentage of patients receive the privilege of mid cap. I would say not even more than 3%. So today, with more than a million CABG performed annually worldwide, India, India contributes almost 10% of it. But how do we get there? Believe me, it wasn't an easy road at all. These legend and stalwarts do not require any introductions. First came the experimental era of CABG from brave man forcing the barriers open. Carroll, Winsberg, Demikov, and let's not forget Kolesov who actually did the first op pumps mid cap in way back in 1960s. Legendary surgeons like Favellaro and Effler kickstarted the vein graft era. And due to the excellent results of internal memory graft, surgeons started looking for another arterial graft. So Carpenter introduced the radial artery. Brain Baxton and James Tertullis emphasized the superior potency results of lima and radial artery compared to the venous grafts. 
Then came the era of minimally invasive cardiac surgery. Started on the shoulder of these innovative surgeons, it has been continuously evolving in the terms of technology, reproducibility, safety, numbers, and results. And now we are not going to stop here. PKB is totally endoscopic CAVG, and this is what we are aiming at. If we have to do PKBs tomorrow, we have to start doing midcaps today. So mixed CAVG is a beneficial and effective as conventional CAVG. And now we have enough evidences worldwide that the midterm results of graft patency in mixed CAVG is comparable to conventional CAVG via sternotomy. So primary aim of CABG is to give symptom-free survival, better quality of life, and least reintervention rate. So mixed CABG is based on the principles of avoiding sternotomy, avoiding cardiopulmonary bypass, better postoperative recovery, total arterial revascularizations, and nevertheless, it should be cost-effective. So mainly, we can safely use bilateral internal memory artery even in diabetics, and no need to be worried about sternal wound complications. So why total arterial should be our aim? Over the years, many landmark articles have proven repeatedly that total arterial is the best that can be offered to our patients. So this has also been proven for diabetics and patients with severe LV dysfunction. Still, some of you might be having a questions. Why mid-cap? So for last so many years, we have come very comfortable of doing surgery through conventional way and we produce excellent results. But then I've been doing these procedures for more than a decade now. And from my own experience, I can tell you that it is safe, definitely less invasive and easily reproducible. So if someone can do it, then I can do it. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. And from patient's perspective, it allows early and full recovery, definitely better cosmosis and negligible or no chances of wound infection. A small cosmetic incision is the greatest advantage of mix. For mid-cap single vessel LED grafting, it is an anterior thoracotomy, whereas for multi-vessel grafting, the thoracotomy is a bit lateral. Subramanium et al. popularized inferior mid-cap via epigastric using the right gastroepiploic vessels for the PDA or right side grafting. So basic idea is to offer mid-cap to every patient who walks to your clinic. So the most important aspect is how you select your patients, especially during the initial days. What all things that you look for in your patients? Easiest subset of patients are one who are lean and thin as compared to elderly and obese. You first, your first patient for mid-cap should be ideally having this profile, mild to moderate COPD is in fact good subset surprisingly as they have a larger AP diameter of the chest wall and gives some more space to work. Certain comorbid conditions you may not like to see in your patients, like severe COPD or chest wall deformities. There are certain contraindications for mid cap morbidly obese, severe COPD, peripheral vascular disease, as I mentioned earlier, chest wall deformation, deformities, severe LV dysfunction, heavily calcified coronaries intramyocardial vessels if the vessel is really small less than a millimeter size or malignant arrhythmias or pericardial calcifications so i wouldn't say all these are contraindications but these subsets are difficult to handle with mid cap approach not many contraindications left anymore this technique can be extended to the patient with left mid stem disease and poor lv functions and can be performed on an empty beating heart using peripheral cannulations for CPB establishment. But when you are in the initial days, just starting your program, you should avoid taking emergency cases and seek hearts. There is a conflicting data on whether the use of multiple arterial grafts in elderly. This risk suggests cautions use of bilateral memory artery harvest, especially in elderly patients. However, these risks are mitigated with the elimination of the sternotomy and thus multiple arterial bypass may be accomplished without increasing risk of sternal wound complication. Although there are no randomized trials, but it is well accepted and proven scientifically that mid-cap leads to better pulmonary function and less post-operative pain with time. 
this elegant study from german germany compares the pft pre op and post op day 1 3 and 5 after mix cabg as you can note all the pft parameters that is fe v1 and vital capacity are better in the mix patients on all days post operatively including day 5 the importance of this probably underestimated especially during this covid era that we are living in the, the art of distal anastomosis see in most of the centers and most of the surgeons what they do is usually they keep the conduits bit uh, away from the uh, grafting vessels and they take a few stitches here and there at the heel or toe and then they are parachuting down so this will give you the assurance that your bite has not taken the posterior walls and it will form the cobra shape uh, the which is an ideal for anastomosis so Al alfred tector popularized the t and y graphs with which it was possible to achieve total arterial complete myocardial revascularizations hence we prefer in bilateral in situ grafts or a t and y grafts this would be most useful in patient with severe aortic atherosclerosis and aortic lima and rima y grafting provide the least risk of cva in these patients uses of bima that is bilateral internal mammary artery gives freedom from reintervention close to 95% at 10 years in tbd patients as far as the instrumentation is concerned we need a longer instruments to work in the depth of the incision in mid cap So let us not forget Arjunjaner's rule, the law of conservation of torture. So minimally invasive cardiac surgery transfers the pain of surgery from patient to the surgeon. So if surgeon is ready to bear this pain, then this is I would say a wonderful surgery to perform. Special retraction systems are available, but the retraction of the first assistant should be also suffice. specialized stabilization devices are also available but we prefer to use a conventional octopus and this can also be suffice to make life simpler various anastomotic devices have come into the market like the passport proximal anastomotic system or the seaport distal anastomosis system recent trials have validated the safety but long term studies are needed but unfortunately their use is limited especially in our country because of their very high cost these devices will surely help us reach our ultimate goal of totally endoscopic total arterial complete myocardial revascularization so this is a very short video of total arterial mid cap how we do it at our center So in this particular patients, we have used Lima and Rima as a conduit and making a Y and doing perform three anastomoses. This gentleman had triple vessel disease with LAD diagonal and OM, which was very diffusely diseased with ejection fraction of 30%. And this is how usually we our positions and drop our patients. And in this particular patients, we have used a, a Lima retracting system from uh, Falling. Uh, company and uh, i'm sure you must uh, have observed that whenever you put incision uh, you have to keep this blade lima retracting blade more laterally into the incision to prevent the injury to lima i usually start harvesting lima at the bottom and i harvest as a pedicle uh, so what we do is here we use a more longer or grasper Uh, which is again very specialized for uh, lima harvesting in through mid cap and uh, long cotter tip uh, i usually use a spray mode for harvesting uh, uh, any of the conduits with higher voltage and once we have take down the uh, conduit the next step would be to make it semi skeletonized from uh, pedicle so here what i am doing is this uh, cutting the endothoracic fascias over the artery and removing the extra Uh, fascia and fat surrounding conduits and here you can appreciate a very nice flow of uh, left internal mammary artery and once you have done with uh, lima the next step would be to shift the lima retractor more toward uh, medially 
uh, for easier harvest a takedown of uh, right internal memory artery. So here you can appreciate how we have fixed the uh, retractor. We, we are using the same retractor for Lima and Rima uh, takedown. Again, uh, like uh, Lima, we start harvesting Rima as, uh, from bottom and then we go upwards uh, at the top. And once you reach the top, uh, uh, the length uh, ideally should be suffice for at least uh, lower down uh, OM. And uh, like uh, Lima, again, uh, this conduit also will be semi skeletonized. And pericardium, uh, this is how we do it. We usually open pericardium in inverted T fashion. And we take uh, as much as uh, pericardium stay on both the sides of the uh, table. And once you've decided to do a Y, uh, here how we fix our Y using a couple of 5-0 polypropylene. So then the conduit uh, will be very fixed at the side of Y. And this will be very useful stitches. Uh, to perform a Y anastomosis, I usually use 8-0 polypropylene on uh, 150 micron needle uh, of nine millimeter length. And I usually start from the uh, heel and then uh, uh, finish at the toe. So once I usually uh, take the stitches on the left side and when I finish the left side, I usually go on the right side and finish the anastomosis. Uh, whenever you are performing a Y anastomosis with the radial or rima, uh, uh, you must remember that you keep the retractor, that is a Lima retractor intact. So this will give you more space uh, to perform your anastomosis. In fact, uh, when you use this retractor, uh, you can in fact uh, do a higher anastomosis also. So sometimes you might have to do a ramus or high diagonals, then your uh, Y uh, side would be a bit higher than the pulmonary annulus. Otherwise, usually the Y anastomosis will fall at the side of the pulmonary annulus. And this is how what I was telling you is that first you do anastomosis or suture at the left side. And once you have finished with the left side, you come on the, uh, you and then do an anastomosis from the right side. Again, uh, you require a very least uh, assistant help. So you, you have to develop a technique in such a way that you would not require a lot of help of an assistant because the vision will be very limited. So at the end, uh, what you see is the flow from the rima and nicely pulsatile dancing uh, lima and rima and you must have fixed uh, Y anastomosis once you are finished with the anastomosis and once you are uh, happy with your y anastomosis the next thing to do a diagonal anastomosis so uh, this is our practice routine practice even in our conventional cases once uh, if we have to do a diagonal first we try and do a diagonal anastomosis first followed by led and then uh, we go on a posterior wall uh, so uh, I'm sure you must have observed that our anastomotic technique is uh, very similar, whether it is for Y or with the distal anastomosis also. But only difference is here, what we use is, instead of 8.0, we use a 7.0 polypropylene on 9.3 millimeter, 250 micron needle. Uh, uh, there are a lot of devices which by which uh, you can stabilize your uh, heart. In this particular case, we have used a metallic uh, cardiac stabilizer. Uh, otherwise, the non stronomy octopus is also widely available. The only thing is it is expensive. So once you are done with this uh, diagonal anastomosis side to side, uh, you must fix your anastomosis before you go for further or distal anastomosis like LED anastomosis. As I said earlier, the anastomotic technique is the same. 
uh, we do not change anastomosis technique for any of our anastomosis. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in my lecture that I use shunt in almost all my cases. So here what you see is we use shunt. Uh, that again, the size of shunt is all depends on the size of your uh, artery. So as I mentioned, uh, first uh, I finished anastomosis on the left side and then uh, once I come on the toe, I go on the other side, that is on the right side and finish the anastomosis. At the end of anastomosis, I usually fix my all grafts and uh, uh, this is how I placed octopus for OM. In this particular patient, the OM was very diffuse the disease. So uh, in this patient, we have done endotectomy. Uh, using a close uh, technique, uh, traction and counter traction technique. So it is not that you, uh, that endotomy is is not possible by means of mix. Uh, as your uh, uh, experience uh, increases, one can take more and more challenging cases, and one can easily do even diffuse CDCs in tromagadal vessels or even a bad LV or even if, if the heart is big, one, still these techniques can be doable and reproducible. So like in first patients, what we have done is uh, uh, we have done diagonal uh, with uh, side to side lima and end to side LED and then third graft is uh, put on OM with OM and me. In this particular patients, uh, we have done four grafts, uh, uh, diagonal LED, OM, and then what you see is PDA uh, by using a uh, right internal memory artery in a retrograde fashion. Here are some tricks and tips to make our life easy. Choose your entry space wisely. Keep blood pressure between 80 to 100, not too high, not too low. Follow steps to increase exposure. Liberal use of IABP and levosimindan, especially in low ejection fraction patients, and do not hesitate to go on pump as in when require or very unknown trouble by cannulating femoral femoral. So we live and practice in the 21st century, and we do not practice without evidence of efficacy and safety. So let's see the evidence for mixed CAVG. In 2020, we published our own data from UN Meta Institute. Single vessel mid-cap Lima to LED already has well-established results. So we studied our results close to 800 mixed CABG cases over five years to evaluate the safety and efficacy of multi-vessel total arterial mid-cap. So in this prospective study group, 378 cases of single vessel mid-cap and mid-cap involving venous graft were excluded. 416 cases of multi-vessel total arterial mid-cap were followed up angiographically six months after surgery. The primary study objective was to characterize the success of the procedure, which is graft patency at six months. The graft patency in CT angiography was evaluated by Fitz Gibbon scoring system. Total 1087 distal anastomoses were done. The average number of distal per patient is 2.6 and almost 50% of the patients received three arterial grafts. As far as the conduits are concerned, Lima was used in every case. Almost 60% of our patients received Rima and close to one third cases received radial. 270 patients were evaluated at six months. A total of 640 grafts were assessed. More than 91% were fit skip on class grade one and less than 5% grafts had more than 50% stenosis. 100% of Lima grafts were patent and 97% of Rima grafts were patent and closer to 92% of radial grafts were patent. So these are the CT and and post operative pictures of our patients. They are back on their feet, absolutely normal by day 10 after surgery. A systemic review and meta-analysis was also done from London, UK, comparing drug-eluting stents and mid-cap for isolated LED disease. 
Midcap offers superior freedom from target vessel re-intervention with similar mortality myocardial infarction rate MAC compared to PCI with drug eluding stent for isolated proximal LED stenosis. Megan et al. published this large dual center ex experience. The main finding of this report is that multivessel coronary revascularization can be performed minimally invasive in a larger number of patients with wide applicability and excellent procedural outcomes. Complete revascularization was achieved in 95% of patients with mean of 2.1 drafts, rate of perioperative mortality was 1.3%, and only 3.8% required conversion to sternotomy, 7.6% required the use of CPB, and mean hospital stay was close to six days at mean follow-up of up to two years, out of which only 3% of patients required re-intervention. This study was the first large report wherein minimally invasive multivessel approach compares favorably with the results of standard CABG operations via sternotomy. Lapier et al. compared 150 cases in each group, mixed CABG versus sternotomy opt CABG. So mix had a lower transfusion rate, shorter length of stay, less wound infection, and shorter return to full activity. Mix patient did have increased incidence of self-limiting pleural effusion, which resolved by day three. Cardiac surgeons at Belarus have done an elegant propensity match study from 2007 to 2014. 537 consecutive patients underwent CABG by the same surgeon. Propensity score computer matching was performed and total 453 patients were successfully matched in three groups of 151 mixed CABG versus opcap CABG versus on pump CABG. Here we see bias reduction after propensity score matching and the standardized main differences of covariates before and after propensity score matching. All parameters were comparable between these three groups except lesser wound infections and perioperative blood loss, shorter hospital less length of stay, and time to return to full physical activity in the mixed group. Midterm outcomes of all MACE were also comparable, and MACE is least in mixed group. At three-year post-operative period, graft patency was examined via CT angiogram. Mean number of graft was three. Grafts were called patent IF without evidence of disease or suboptimal anastomosis. The overall angiographic graft patency was almost 98% for all grafts and 100% for Rita grafts. The mixed CABG procedure seems as safe as op-cap and on-pump CABG and is associated with less wound infection, perioperative blood loss, shorter hospital length of stay, and time to return to full physical activity. Nambiar et al. from New Delhi have presented their series in JTCVS, with mean graphs being close to three and conversion to sternotomy is just 0.54%. They have achieved full revascularization with minimal complication in almost all patients, and the 12-month angiographic follow-up is also very good. And based on these global evidences, EACTS 2018 guidelines have placed MidCap as class 2 recommendations, although only for isolated LED lesions or as a prior to hybrid revascularization strategy. UNATAL presented an elegant single center, single surgery study, 210 patients followed up for a month, Examining the effects of learning curve on clinical outcomes and operative time in mixed CABG. The patients were studied undergoing a combination of off pump, on pump, and single vessel versus multi vessels versus small thoracotomy approaches. No significant mortality or morbidity difference in all groups, shorter OR times with the later cases compared to first 25 cases. This study Thus, show that the team experience with sternotomy opcap can initiate a small thoracotomy approach with low short-term risk. Ultimately, the most important person in the room is the patient. And if we are able to give the best quality of revascularization and achieve complete revascularization, then we should pursue mixed CABG.
and make it available for all. In conclusion, ample evidence exists to pursue total arterial mixed CABG. If total arterial mixed CABG was an easy as popping as a pill, we would surely prescribe it to every patient. If we do not do mixed CABG today, we will not able to do TCAP tomorrow. Keep the learning curve in mind and maintain the quality of your surgery. We are not doing it just for cosmosis. We all know that the change is the only constant phenomena of life. For us, change is to upgrade ourselves and we can excel only if we make it as a routine. Never be afraid to dare to try. Simulation and training is an important aspect of dodging the learning curve of mix. Learning from master makes all the difference. So we can learn from the experience, not make those mistakes and become a role model for the next generation. Thank you.